Jack here, owner of Hockey Alley, bringing you back hockey history. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the things we didn't do when we played hockey. So over the years I played junior hockey in Canada, minor leagues, and then uh, pro hockey in Europe. And there was things that we didn't do that they do today. So here they are. Let's go. So the first thing we didn't do was give high fives to the bench after we scored. What we would do is go straight back to the faceoff at center ice and try to get another one. There was no use going to the bench because we figured if we did, we'd be taken out and the next line would be put in. So we'd go straight back to the faceoff circle at center ice and le that's letting the coach know that we're going to get another goal. And that's what we did. The next one we didn't do was drop on one knee. I feel it's a sign of weakness. It shows that uh, you're tired, so the coach might think you're tired. We always stood up in our time. We never dropped on one knee to listen to the coach. Everybody stood up. And even when I coach today, I see kids drop on one knee. I tell them to get back up because if you're tired in the game, you're not going to be able to go down on one knee and stay there and relax. So might as well be realistic as possible. And even in tryouts, I never saw anybody drop on one knee to listen to the coach. We just never wanted to show any sign of weakness. The next one that I didn't see at all was hot dog celebrations after a goal. That never happened. And if you did, you'd better watch your back because you're probably going to be a target for the rest of the season. Even by other teams because the word does get around, even without the internet. And... Uh, I never ever saw anybody do a hot dog celebration after a goal. And uh, just it was a different uh, way of thinking back then. The players thought differently than today. The next one is turning your back when getting checked. I do see this once or twice a game nowadays in the NHL. And that never happened. Nobody ever turned their back when we played. The referee would say, you're on your own. You turn your back. We don't call it. That's your fault for turning your back. Do not turn your back. And uh, today, you know, they have the stop sign. My dad did predict about 20, 25 years ago that the stop sign was a bad idea. And he was right. The next one is chirping the other team. That just didn't happen too often. If two guys wanted to fight, they would say, you want to go? And that was it. But chirping the other team was a no-no because you would be probably taken out the next game or have your bell rung for sure. So no one ever chirped much. Um, you had respect for the other team, but you did play tough. A lot of hitting, but chirping was not common. I didn't see it that much. And especially in Europe, I didn't see it at all. The next one is dry land training. We never did dry land training at all before the game or during the hockey season. All we did was go to the rink, put our gear on. We'd show up early to get prepared with our hockey gear and then 15-minute uh, warm-up and the, it was game time. So there was no dry land training. There was no personal trainers on the side helping you on the team. None of that. It was just a coach and an assistant coach. Before training camp, you had to get ready on your own. That was your responsibility, and that's just how it was. So I'm against dry land training. I refuse to do that for the kids. I feel that you can get them in shape on the ice, and that's just what I believe. The next one is looking up at the Jumbotron to see the play. We never did that, and Jumbotrons with the video never existed. We just had the scoreboards, and that was it. So we weren't distracted looking up at the fans or any of that we focused on our game today i see players just looking up at the jumbotron quite a bit and i feel it's a distraction and they don't focus on the game the next one is flex on a hockey stick we never cared if there was flex or not on a hockey stick we just use whatever we got today i see parents freaking out if there's five points off on a flex they're freaking out they think it's going to make the difference in their shot or not and it really doesn't matter. The next one is trick shots. Michigan move, between the legs shot. None of that stuff ever happened. Nobody did that stuff. 
And you might be saying, well, they weren't skilled enough. No, they were. They can do it in practice if they wanted to. Just you knew better not to do it because if you did that, guess what? You'd be a target for the rest of the season for sure. Someone's going to come out and get you. And you better watch out. So you never try to embarrass the other team. Definitely not. And uh, even the goalie would probably take a swing at you for trying something like that for sure. The next one is flashy gear. Bling, bling. Nobody wore flashy gear back in the day. And I know you're probably saying, well, it didn't exist. Well, if something was pretty bright and colorful, I'm sure they would have probably spray painted it black or some color that's, you know, traditional. All the stuff today that you see is all about marketing and flashy gear just to sell equipment. That's all it is. And they add a few hundred bucks more to it. So it's ridiculous what's going on. And I told today, use black hockey sticks. And if the skates have a little bit of color, I'll spray paint them black. Traditional color. If you were to wear flashy gear, you'd definitely be made fun of for sure. Thank you so much for watching my video. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.